Hey, welcome back Business Legends, it's the K-Man here for Business Training Tips. I'm now in the Hilton Hotel in Brisbane, and I'm over here in Australia from New Zealand to, of all things, to do sales training for the Vision Personal Training franchise. And what's interesting is, at the airport at Auckland Airport, before I hopped on my plane, I was walking towards my gate, and I came across uh, a duty-free watch shop, and have luxury, beautiful watches. And as I was walking by, this watch caught my eye. It was a Breitling watch. And I thought, wow, that's lovely. And I was having a look at it, and that encouraged me or enticed me to go into the, the watch shop. So I walked in, and I was looking around at all the beautiful watches, and quite expensive watches. For example, the Breitling was around about $12,000 but it caught my eye. And as I was walking around, there was a gentleman in there and he was looking down doing a bit of paperwork, well dressed. He was obviously the watch salesman. And he was busy and he sort of ignored me for a little while. And I thought, well, that's interesting. You know, a customer, potential client has come in, maybe with a pocket full of cash, ready to buy a 10,000 plus watch, and you're busy working out whatever you're working out on that piece of paper. But over time, he looked up and he said, Oh, hello there, how are you? I said, I'm great, thank you. And he said, do you, uh, do you like watches? And I thought to myself, wow, well, of course I like watches. What else would I be in here? That's what I thought. But it was an interesting question. I said, yes, I'm a, I'm a watch collector, of which I am. Because I thought I'd throw him a line and see what he does with it. I said, I'm a watch collector, of which I am, because I love watches. And I have yeah, dozens of watches at home. And I, I'm always looking for a new watch to add to my collection. And he looked at me and he went, well, okay, that's great. And I was waiting for him to work off that little line I threw him. And he didn't. He just went, oh, that's great. And I continued walking around and I thought, well, that's really interesting. I've actually shared with you I'm a watch collector. And obviously watch collectors are always out for new watches. <clears throat> and you just left it at that. I thought, okay, he's not trying to sell to me. Obviously, I'm going to have to sell myself. So I thought, okay, I'm curious. So as I was walking around, I said, so have you been working here long? He says, oh, yeah, I've been working here for about eight years. And uh, we're about to move out of the, uh, the airport. Um, the lease is up, we're moving on. And as far as I know from business, the only reason why you move on is if you're not making money. Because if you're making money and you're selling lots of watches, making lots of profit, you don't move on. You re-sign a lease and even if you have to pay more money for the lease, you pay for it when you're the lease to stay there if you're making money. And the only reason why you're moving on is because you're not making money. And it was very obvious why they're not making money because he did nothing. He was just waiting for me to go around and pick a watch, bring out my cash and pay for it. And this is, I thought, well, this is after eight years of obviously working in this watch shop. He's probably had eight years of sales training. And I'm sure they don't teach him to not follow a lead or not follow a clue. So the message to you is to don't just leave it at that. Don't let the customer make the decision to buy. Give them a offering. Find out about them. For example, what he could have done when I walked in, and he said, hello there, welcome to the watch shop. You're obviously interested in watches. May I ask, what type of watches are you interested in? And I may have said, look, I may, even if I said, I'm a watch collector. Now, wow, that's exciting. Tell me about your watches. Wouldn't that be a good question? Tell me about your watches. Because if someone's a watch collector and they collect watches, guess what they love talking about? They love talking about their watches. So you say, hey, tell me about your watch collection. How many have you got? Blah, 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 blah. Wow, what's your favorite one? Blah, blah, blah. So find out about the history. Don't try to sell them a new watch yet until you know about their history of watches, until you know about their collection, until you know about what their favorite watch is. Because that's going to give you a clue of what types of watches they're going to be interested in. And then a great leading question will be, hey, now considering that you are a fine watch collector and you have lots of fine watches and you share with me you love this one, you love that one, you love that one, tell me what would be the next perfect watch to add to your collection? And I would have said, wow, the next perfect watch would be this. This is my perfect new watch. And they go, wow, it so happens that we have a watch like that here. Would you like to have a look at it? And I would have probably said, of course. And then he would take me in, he would have the watch, and I would go, wow. And he says, try it on, because when you try the watch on, it looks a lot better than when it's off. And you'll put it on, as soon as it's on my wrist, it's very hard for me to take off my wrist if I love the watch. It would have been a simple process. 
So when it comes to selling, you have to be able to be interested in your client's history of what they've got, what they love, that will give you clues of what they want. So whether you're selling watches or selling gadgets or gadgets or selling cars or whatever it might be, you could, a great question is find out about what they got, see if they like it, see if they love it, see what their favorite thing about it is, see what their most hated thing about it is. It may be, they may not like it. Then you say, what would be the perfect watch for you? What would be the perfect car for you? What would be the perfect body for you? What would be the perfect house or home for you? Tell me about that. And that would give you lots of clues whether you have that in your stock <laughs> or have that available in your business to be able to offer. But what many people do if they do attempt to sell is they tend to sell the wrong thing. I've been in watch stores before and I've been walking around and they've saw me look at a watch and go, wow, that's a beautiful watch, isn't it? That's magnificent. Start telling me all about the watch. But they don't know why I looked at it. Because it may, to me, be beautifully ugly. <laughs> it may be beautifully wrong. I might be looking at it for the wrong reason. So just because I'm looking at it doesn't mean I like it. I might be looking at it because it's ugly, or I don't like it, or it's not for me. So you have to find out what your client has. Find out about their past. If someone comes in and you're selling fitness and they're in shape, you go, hey, you look like in shape. You look in fantastic shape. Congratulations. What do you do? Well, I do this and I do this and I do this. And so that's magnificent. What's your favorite things that you do? Well, so tell me, what's your goal from here? What would you want to do with your fitness now? What do you want to do with your, your body now? What would be the perfect body for you? What would be the perfect goal for you? What would be the perfect car with the perfect watch? And they would tell you, and then you can actually start to make the offering relative to what they want and not try to sell them what they don't want. And worst of all, just don't ignore them. Just find out about your potential client and when they become a potential client, they will eventually become a client because you're interested in them, therefore they'll be interested in, to, interested in what you have to, to offer. And what's the fascinating thing is when I walked out of the duty free watch shop, I walked out and he didn't even say goodbye. And what he didn't realise is I walked out but the Britling watch walked in, or stayed in. Yeah, would have I liked to have taken that watch? Yeah. Well, I would have got a duty free, would have saved myself a couple of thousand dollars and if I was going to buy it, that would be the place I'd buy it from. But I'm not going to buy it from someone who is not interested in my watch collection, not interested in my interests, and not interested in helping me to add my perfect watch to my watch collection. So be interested in your potential clients. And if you're interested in their past, and what they have, and what they don't want, and what they want, then they'll be interested in what, in what you have to offer, and they'll soon become a client, and they'll be buying your watch, or your home, or your fitness program, or whatever it might be. So see you in the next fitness and the business training tips.